Hello friends and welcome to the Midweek Update for September 11th, 2024. I'm glad you're tuning in today. Let me share with you a few things that I want you to know about, then one chapter in the Bible that I would encourage you to read through and pray this week. So it is the month of September. Would you remember next time you're at the store to buy diapers and wipes? Uh, we work with DHS, we serve foster families, and when foster families are called and say, we, we have a baby for you to take, it usually happens with really short notice. And so we want to be a resource as a church to help DHS families, those who are part of our church and those in the larger community, to be ready when those babies arrive. So diapers and wipes, buy them up, bring them in, okay? Also, when you're around campus, we're taking the month of September, uh, calling it Selfie September. Did I, did I roll my eyes a little bit at that? Selfie September. Uh, take a selfie this month. We have a Touchpoint database. Uh, that serves our staff and our directors and all of our volunteers in the church and I can log on I can see your file and it'd be great if I had an up-to-date picture and made sure all the information there is up updated uh, even if you log on to touchpoint you can do that directly into your touchpoint file give a good photo and make sure all of your info is up to date that way uh, we make sure when we contact you we make sure we're calling the right number and I run into that issue every now and then just want to make sure that we stay in contact with one another then one event this week it's actually tomorrow September 12th is our memory cafe we took the month of August off and Jenny Graham who is the editor of editorials at the Tulsa world will be our guest speaker so those who are in the early stages of memory issues dementia this is a great opportunity for the care receiver and the caregiver to have something very interactive uh, to feed the mind and to be around a community of Christians that take care of one another. And again, that's uh, September 12th from 10 to 11.30 in our adult conference center. Okay, so uh, one pastoral note, if you're working with me on Wednesday night through the Practicing the Way material, please do your reading in the John Mark Comer book. If for some reason you haven't read, you go, I meant to this week, uh, shame on you. No. If you didn't read this week, just come anyway. Don't let that get in your way. You can catch up on the reading. It's really easy to do community together, to understand what it means to follow Jesus, to focus on Jesus, and to be formed to become like Jesus. Uh, this is what we're doing on Wednesday night, 6 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. So here's the one chapter, the one psalm I want to give you to pray this week. And it's one that you know, Psalm 23. It's often used as funerals, at funerals, but what's interesting is this psalm has to do with life, not death, okay? And it starts with, the Lord is my shepherd. So if you know the story of King David, before he was a king, he was a shepherd, and he took lessons from his first job, his first occupation as a shepherd, and he goes, you know, God's a lot like this. Uh, my first job was not shepherding, it was in fast food. And I say to this day, I learned more about being a pastor, being a fast food worker, than just about any other job I've ever had because people were living in a big hurry and oftentimes hard to please. That job, the five years I worked in fast food, prepared me in ways that I didn't understand at the time for ministry. And so David's first job as a shepherd, he goes, I, I see a clear picture of God. And here's what a shepherd does. A, a shepherd basically has three parts to the job description. A shepherd is going to provide, a shepherd is going to guide, and a shepherd is going to protect. And you see those three things happen in this psalm. How does a shepherd provide? Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. And here in the first couple of verses, he makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside quiet waters, restores my soul. God provides what we need. God also guides. You see that at the end of verse 3. He guides me along right paths for his namesake. And then he protects. Even though I go through the darkest valley, and in the Hebrew it's the valley of the shadow of death. That phrase is used some 20 times in the Older Testament meaning it's, it's the darkest place you can imagine. By the way, this is why we use this psalm at, at funerals, but it's a, it's a hyperbole to say, just if you could imagine life getting really, really dark, God is still there protecting you even in that. So what does a shepherd do? A shepherd provides, guides, protects. It's exactly what God does. Now I'm gonna make a note about the end of Psalm 23, but I wanna model for you just a minute what it means to pray this psalm, because if you'll notice 
the psalmist is talking about God. But if you turn this psalm to God, all you need to do is change the pronouns and it makes for a prayer. Lord, you are my shepherd. I lack nothing. You make me to lie down in green pastures. You lead me beside quiet waters. By the way, sheep won't drink out of running water. The water needs to be still. It frightens them too easily. God nourishes us. You refresh my soul. You guide me on right paths. This is a prayer of proclamation as to how God, God will provide and guide and protect your life. One note at the end, because people think once you get to uh, verse 5, it, it changes pictures. goes from being a shepherd to being around a banquet table. You prepare a table before me in the midst of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. Actually, the idea of God prepares a table, God prepares a table land. He prepares a pasture for his sheep, right? He prepares the place in front of us. And I really like this idea of you anoint my head with oil because in the ancient world and shepherds in this part of the world, there would be little bugs, little parasites that would drill into the nose of sheep, right? And cause them to itch, irritate. Oftentimes it would drive them crazy with itching. But if a shepherd put oil, would put oil on the tip of the nose, it would protect the nose, it would drive the parasites away, it would be healing. Even in the dark valleys, the darkest places, and just those little things that are parasitic on our life, even the little bugs that bother us, God's got both in his hands. Pray through Psalm 23, meditate on this, sit with it a while, and you can even take those first five words of this and make it a constant companion. You could pray it every day, everywhere you go. The Lord is my shepherd and hold on to him. I love you. Love serving as your pastor. Love these midweek updates. Thanks for joining me for a few minutes. The Lord bless you. I'll see you soon.